What do? They wish. لَوْ تَكْفُرُونَ That you would disbelieve. كَمَا كَفَرُوا Just as they have disbelieved. What do? Is love. And what kind of love is this? خَالِصُ الْمُحَبَّةِ That these hypocrites, they yearn, they wish. Who does they refer to? The hypocrites, the munafiqeen, who are mentioned in the previous ayah. That these people, they wish that لَوْ تَكْفُرُونَ كَمَا كَفَرُوا That if you would disbelieve just as they have also disbelieved. What is the kufr that they have committed? Leaving the Prophet ﷺ. And remember that the kufr of the hypocrite, it is hidden. It is concealed. It is mastur. We learned earlier in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَإِذَا لَقُلْ لَذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَّا وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَى شَيَاطِينِهِمْ قَالُوا إِنَّا مَعَكُمْ And before that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُلُوا آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ They're not actually believers. So, وَدُّوا لَوْ تَكْفُرُونَ كَمَا كَفَرُوا What is this kufr? This kufr is that which is hidden, meaning they don't publicize, that they want benefits from Muslims, and they also want benefit from the disbelievers. They're only concerned about their benefit. And we learn that some people became Muslim, they stayed in Medina or they went to Mecca. Some people who became Muslim in Mecca, they did not do hijrah from Mecca to Medina. So they wish the same thing for the other Muslims as well. That why are you compromising so much you know, in your dunya? Why are you sacrificing your family, your house, your business, your money? Live the same way that we are living. And you will gain the benefits of being a Muslim. And you will also gain the benefits of being with the disbelievers. You will have good everywhere. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls this kufr. That when a person appears to be a Muslim, but he's a Muslim only to gain benefits of being Muslim. And at the same time, he also wants benefits from the kufar. So what do لَوْ تَكْفُرُونَ كَمَا كَفَرُوا فَتَكُونُونَ سَوَاء So that all of you become the same. You understand the meaning of فَتَكُونُونَ سَوَاء That all of you become the same. What does it mean by that? That we all compromise in our deen and then we can live in harmony with the disbelievers. This is why they didn't migrate. This is why they wouldn't want to be with the Muslims. فَتَكُونُونَ سَوَاء Allah says, فَلَا تَتَّخِذُوا مِنْهُمْ Then do not take from them awliya, close friendship. Then do not have any close friendship with them. حَتَّى يُهَاجِرُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Until they do hijrah in the way of Allah. What is this hijrah? Hijrah obviously is at that time from Makkah to Medina. Until and unless they migrate from Makkah to Medina. Until they do hijrah, don't consider them to be your close friends because they're not friends. They're not friends. At one time they will come and take benefit from you. At another time they will come fighting against you. So don't be deceived by these people. Don't take them as friends until and unless they do hijrah to Medina. And we also learned that there were some people who lived in the outskirts of Medina. Why? They didn't want to live inside Medina because if you lived inside Medina you have to go pray salah five times a day in the masjid. You have to follow the discipline. Then you have to defend. You have to fight. And if you're living away, then you can live your own comfortable life. But if you're living with the community, then there's a lot of responsibility. So in order to be safe from that responsibility, they would live separately. What does Allah say? Don't take them as awliya until they become a part of the community. Secondly, hatta yuhajiru fi sabil Allah is understood as until they leave, yuhajiru meaning they leave, meaning they leave their houses with the Prophet ﷺ to wherever he is going for battle, fi sabil Allah. Because there were some hypocrites who lived in Medina, pretended to be Muslims, went to the masjid, prayed five times a day in jama'ah, in congregation, but when it came time to go fight in the way of Allah, they would stay at home. They would stay at home. So don't take them as awliya until they accompany you when you leave fi sabilillah in the way of Allah. فَإِن تَوَلَّوْ Then if they turn away from what? From hijrah. If they turn away from hijrah and they don't come and join you, they don't come to Darul Islam, فَخُذُوهُمْ then you take them, meaning you can take them as captives if they come and fight against you. 
وَقْتُلُوهُمْ And you can also kill them. Meaning if they come and fight against you in battle, just as you would kill other disbelievers, you can also kill these people because they're actively fighting against you. حَيْثُ وَجَدْتُمُوهُمْ Wherever you find them. What does it mean by this wherever you find them? Meaning in the battlefield, wherever you encounter them, you're allowed to kill them. Then it's not like you're killing a Muslim and that's haram for you. No. Because they are fighting against you. They're fighting against you. Therefore, you can take them as captives and you can also kill them. وَلَا تَتَّخِذُوا مِنْهُمْ وَلِيًّا وَلَا نَصِيرًا And don't take from them any wali nor any nasir. So we see in this ayah that the difference between a believer and a hypocrite is that a believer wants everyone to believe. And the hypocrite wants that those people who are guided should also be misguided. A believer wants everyone to grow in their iman, in their amal. And the hypocrite, what does he want? He wants everyone to compromise on his deen. This is a sign of nifaq. This is a sign of nifaq. What? That just as you have compromised, you want other people to compromise as well. Just because you got a house on through haram ways, you're encouraging other people. Why don't you do the same thing? You know, it's so easy. It's allowed. You know, there is a fatwa. You understand? Why don't you compromise? It's okay. No big deal. This is a sign of hypocrisy. The hypocrite wants that other Muslims should also compromise on their deen. Why? Because he's compromising. Secondly, we learn about the prohibition of taking such people as close friends. Why? Because friends influence one another. So if there is a person who compromises a lot with regards to his religion in order to gain benefit of the dunya, don't take him as a wali. Don't take him as a close friend. Because if you do, they're going to affect you. And as a result, you too will compromise on your deen. We also learn from this ayah that our deen, it demands sacrifice. You cannot live a Muslim without sacrificing. Sometimes that sacrifice means moving from a big house on haram to a small rented property. Sometimes it means leaving a car that was bought through haram to a bus pass. Really. But our deen requires sacrifice. A person cannot be a true sincere believer until and unless he does hijrah. And what is hijrah? It symbolizes sacrifice. You have to sacrifice. We also learn that people who don't side fully with Islam are not worthy of the friendship of Muslims. They're not worthy of friendship of Muslims. Now you may question. Some people might wonder that we are living in a place which is a land that is not Muslim. And there are other lands which are Muslim. So it doesn't mean that we have to do hijrah. We must do hijrah. Because it says, Hatta yuhajru. Now remember that if living in such a place is making you compromise your deen, then you must leave. If it is affecting your deen, if it is affecting your deen, then you can't just live in a place just for the sake of your work, just for the sake of making money. Because at the end of the day, you will be questioned about your deen. And secondly, if you are living in a place like that, then your niya should not just be to enjoy the benefits of that place. That I am here, I enjoy the benefits that the country gives, welfare. I just take, 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 take benefits and I don't contribute. You also have to contribute. You also have to contribute. And the biggest contribution that you can give is to save the akhir of other people. This is why some scholars have said that for a Muslim, the only situation in which he is allowed to live in a non-Muslim land is that he lives for the purpose of doing da'wah, serving the deen. Otherwise, it is not permissible. Because then, what will happen if you're only concerned about your dunya, you're only consumed with the dunya over there, then eventually you're going to compromise on the deen. And we see that sometimes Muslims come to these places and instead of working, instead of contributing to the society, whether it is charitable work or welfare work or religious work, any kind of work, instead of doing that, they take advantage from the place. 
they take advantages. Is it fair that you're benefiting from the money and many times unjustly by making false claims and you're not helping the other people, especially with regards to their akhirah? Is it fair? It's not fair. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَصِلُونَ Except. Now over here, exception is being made. From what? Exception is being made from the qatl of those people who deny hijrah. Munkirin of hijrah. Those people who do not do hijrah, who are mentioned in the previous ayah, because the previous ayah has said that don't take them as awliya until and unless they do hijrah. And if they don't do hijrah, then take them as captives, kill them, if they come and fight against you. Now over here, exception is being made from the qatl of these people. What is that exception? First is, الَّذِينَ يَصِلُونَ إِلَىٰ قَوْمٍ بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنَهُمْ مِسَاقٍ Those people who join, يَصِلُونَ is from the root letters, وَاو صَادْ لَمْ Those people who join a nation, a people, between you and between them is a treaty. There is a misaq. And this misaq refers to a pact of peace. You're not at war with them. So for instance, if you're living in a particular country that is not Muslim, and that country is not at war with other Muslims, then it is permissible for a person to live there. It is permissible for a Muslim to live there. So, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ يَصِلُونَ إِلَىٰ قَوْمٍ بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنَهُمْ مِيسَاقٌ So first of all, there with a qawm between you and between them, there is a misaq. There is a pledge of security, a pact of peace, that we're not going to fight. We're not going to have any battles. Second exception. Oh, or ja'ukum, they came to you. Meaning, if they're forced to come to you in battle. Because remember the Muslims in Mecca, who had not migrated, they would be forced to come in battle. Now you may wonder, why did they come? They should have not come. But remember that in the tribal system, you cannot do whatever you want by yourself. You cannot. If you go against the tribe, that's treachery. So, those people who come to you, meaning who come to you, in battle and hasirat suduruhum their hearts are constricted hasirat is from the root letters had sara and hasir is to surround something to surround to detain to restrain so their hearts are yani, they feel very constricted they feel very uncomfortable they are very uneasy about what? about an yuqatilunakum about the prospect of fighting you aw yuqatilu qawmahum or that they fight their people. They don't like the idea of coming in battle against the Muslims. And at the same time, they don't like the idea of going against their tribe. Going against their tribe. So in this situation, they are averse to fighting you, and they are averse to fighting their own people. So what should you do? They have come in battle. And because they don't want to fight you, they don't want to fight their people. What are these people going to do? They're not going to fight you in battle. Because it's possible that you accompany in battle, but you don't participate in the actual battle. You only remain towards the back, or you are in the battle, but you don't fight anyone, you don't kill anyone. You have a gun, but you don't shoot. Similarly, you're only helping out with the food, maybe, or the other side. So such a person is not actively fighting. He is forced to come because of the situation that he's in, but he's not actively fighting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ And if Allah willed, لَسَلَّطَهُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ Allah would have given them mastery over you. Given who mastery? These Muslims who have come fighting against you with their qawm. And سَلَّطَ يُسَلِّطُ is to give power and mastery and dominance to someone. So Allah would have given them taslil over you. And over here, Salata gives the meaning of strengthening of the hearts. That they would have such confidence that they would actually fight against you. They would have no hasr in their hearts in fighting against you. So if Allah wills, He could have given this confidence in the hearts of these people and they would come and willingly and openly fight you. So because they are not coming with this confidence, but rather they have discomfort in their hearts, فَلَقَاتَلُوكُمْ So they would have fought you. 
Then Allah says, فَإِنِ اعْتَزَلُوكُمْ Then if they withdrew from you, meaning they leave you, they don't fight you, فَلَمْ يُقَاتِلُوكُمْ And they do not fight you, وَأَلْقَوْ إِلَيْكُمُ السَّلَمَ And they offer peace to you. What does it mean by this? They offer peace to you? Meaning they offer some kind of reconciliation. They submit. They say salam. Or they say, like, you know, I'm a Muslim, I'm not going to fight you, don't worry. So, أَلْقَوْ إِلَيْكُمُ السَّلَمَ then Allah says, فَمَا جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ عَلَيْهِمْ سَبِيلًا Then Allah has not given you any way against these people. Meaning then you cannot fight them. You cannot fight these people. You cannot kill them. Who? To summarize, the second exception was of those people who are forced to come with their people to fight you. Why? Because they don't like the idea of going against their people. If they do so, they're going to be finished. They're going to be killed. Right? So for their protection, they have to come like this. Now remember that some of the mustad'afeen even, who are the mustad'afeen? Those who are oppressed. They had no choice. They were mustad'afeen from before. Now if they said, no, no, I'm not coming to the battle with you against the Muslims, they would be killed immediately. So if they accompany the mushrik army against the Muslims, but they come with the hasr in their hearts, meaning they are very uncomfortable at the idea of even fighting against you, then what's their ruling? That if they don't fight you, then you don't fight them. If they don't fight you, then you don't fight them. Then what does it mean? If they do fight you, then you are going to fight them. So this is conditional. As long as they don't fight you, you're not going to fight them. Because really sometimes a person is bound by the situations that he's in and he doesn't have any freedom to make his own choice. So what do we learn? That if they don't want to fight you, then you don't fight them. If they offer peace, then restrain your hands from fighting against them. And do not kill them if they do not join the army of the disbelievers to fight against you. But if they have to join the army, if they have no choice, then they must not kill the Muslims. They must not actively fight against the Muslims. And as a result, you should also not fight them. And we learn that Al-Abbas the uncle of the Prophet ﷺ, he accompanied the mushrikeen in the battle of Badr. And he joined the battle with great hesitation. He didn't want to fight, but he joined the battle with great hesitation. This is why the Prophet ﷺ commanded that he should be only captured and not killed. Then Allah says, سَتَجِدُونَ آخَرِينَ Soon you will find others. Meaning, there is another group of people. There is another category of people. So we see, there are different different types of people different types of hypocrites or different types of political Muslims you can say. You will find another group, Yuriduna, they wish, an yamanukum that they are secure from you, وَيَأْمَنُوا قَوْمَهُمْ and they are also secure from their people. And who are these? They are the munafiqoon. وَإِذَا لَقُلْ لَذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَّا وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَى شَيَاطِينِهِمْ قَالُوا إِنَّا مَعَكُمْ They are the hypocrites. That they want to be at peace with you and they also want to be at peace with their people. Which is why kullama every time ruddu ila al-fitnati they are returned to fitna what happens? Urkisu fiha. They are plunged into it. They are thrown into it. Kullama ruddu ila al-fitna. What is fitna? A trial. So what is that trial? This trial is qital against Muslims. Fighting against the Muslims. So every time they have the opportunity to fight against the Muslims. What happens? They are plunged into it. They are thrown into it. Remember Urkisu? To turn someone upside down. To throw someone face down. So Urkisu fiha. They are thrown into it. They are plunged into it. فَإِلَّمْ يَعْتَزِلُوكُمْ Then if they do not withdraw from you, meaning if they do not stay away from fighting you, وَيُلْقُوا إِلَيْكُمُ السَّلَامَ And they do not offer you peace. Over here, وَيُلْقُوا this is directly connected with Lam Yartazilukum. And in this case it's not necessary to repeat Lam every time. Okay? It's not necessary to repeat Lam every time. So what this means is Lam Yartazilukum if they do not withdraw from you, Walam Yulku Ilaikum Salama and if they do not offer you any peace, Walam Yakufu Aidiahum and if they do not withhold their hands from fighting you, then what should you do? Fahuduhum wa kutuluhum hai suzakiftumuhum. 
then take them as captives and fight them in the battle and kill them anywhere you find them in the battlefield. Why? Why? Because they are given the opportunity to fight and every time they come fighting against you. Every time. And they don't offer any peace. They don't stay away from fighting you. You see, if you compare this ayah with the previous ayah, in the previous ayah, what was mentioned? That they are coming, but they offer peace. They are coming, but they don't fight you. So in that case, you don't fight them. But if they are coming, and they say, yes, yes, we are Muslims, but we are being forced, but at the same time, they are actively fighting, then what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You have to defend yourself. You have to fight them as well. So, وَقَتُلُهُمْ حَيْثُ ثَقِفْتُمُهُمْ وَأُولَٰئِكُمْ And these people, Allah says, جَعَلْنَا لَكُمْ عَلَيْهِمْ سُلْطَانَ مُبِينَ These people we have made for you against them. A clear and manifest proof. What is sultan? An evidence. We have given you a clear evidence against these people. Meaning, you have the right to fight them and you have the right to capture them if needed. Why? Because of their treachery. And what is their treachery? That every time they're offered into fitna, they fall into it. And the word fitna over here has also been understood in another way, which is shirk. So first of all, it is battle against the Muslims. And secondly, it is also said that fitna over here means shirk. What does it mean? That they claim to be Muslim, but they still do what mushrikeen do. They still do what mushrikeen do. Every time they're forced into doing shirk, they do shirk. They compromise on their religion to such a great extent. So from this we learn that there are three forms in which a person who is forced into fighting against the Muslims, there are three forms in which he can obtain security from the Muslims. What are those three forms? First of all, ilqa of as-salam. Offering peace. Offering peace to the Muslims. And what does it mean by offering peace? Either it is to do some peace, some sulh, some pact of peace, some agreement, or it is offering salam, or something like it, in which you offer to them, you tell them, you convey to them that you are safe from me, I'm not going to fight you. Secondly, they do not join the army of the mushrikeen. They do not join the army of the disbelievers, in the sense that, اِعْتَزَلُوكُمْ They stay away from fighting you. And thirdly, if they have no choice but to join the army, then they should withhold their hands from fighting you and killing you. They may accompany the army, but they're not allowed to fight against you. If these three conditions are met, then that means they are sincere. And if they don't fulfill these conditions, what does it mean? They're not sincere. They're corrupt. So, as a conclusion to these ayat, we learn that the Muslims they had two opinions about the hypocrites. What do we do? Do we treat them as Muslims and we don't fight them even if they come fighting against us? Or do we treat them as mushrikeen? That we fight them wherever we find them. In any battle. Over here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a solution. He makes the matter clear that don't generalize. Every person is in a different situation. And depending on his situation, you deal with him. Depending on the situation, you deal with him. Many times we generalize. Oh, look at them. They don't do hijrah? Munafiq. No. Don't generalize. Every person is in a different situation. Maybe they do want to do hijrah. Maybe they do want to migrate. But they can't. Maybe there is a problem. There is a genuine reason. So, you have to deal with the person depending on the situation that they are in. And based on that, there are three situations. What are those situations? The first group is of those people who fight you without any constriction, without any without any hesitation, actively they fight you. So in this case, you fight them. The second is that they are with the people with whom you have a peace treaty. So obviously they're not going to fight you. So when they don't fight you, you don't fight them. They are with the people with whom you have a peace treaty, even if the people are not Muslim. So because they're not fighting you, you're not going to fight them. So just the excuse, just the explanation that they are with the mushrikeen, therefore they deserve to be fought. No, it's not justified. And the third is that they verbally say that we offer peace or they say that we're Muslim, but they practically jump in warfare 
every time against the Muslims. So when you see this repetition in this behavior, that every time there is something, they come against us. Then such people, they're not actually Muslim. You are going to fight them because their disbelief is so obvious. Let's listen to the recitation of these verses. Uh-huh. 